Hello again and welcome back to the composition vlog. Uh, back in the studio! Yay! Um, it's been, alas, about four weeks since I last filmed. Um, I had been meaning to get back to this a lot sooner and yeah, just haven't really. Um, but the good news is that I haven't done nothing in all that time and I actually have stuff to talk to you about, so that's good. Um, I'm going to start with something that I forgot to mention in the last one, uh, which was that Community of Objects was performed in Sydney while I was there uh, by a group called Score Club at the Now Now Festival of Improvisation. Um, it was really nice to have that happen actually because I've not had very much of my stuff performed in my hometown. Um, and it was nice to find an event which apparently has been running for a very very long time uh, that was doing some interesting stuff and meet some new people and that was really great. Uh, the performers, all of whom I believe are actually composers as well, of Score Club were really lovely and got on very well with them and they did a great job I felt. Uh, I made one tweak to the piece uh, which was sort of a test on the grounds that we couldn't really find a suitable table. It turned out all the audience were on one level, seated, all at the same head height. It was going to be difficult for them to see stuff. Uh, we didn't have a tablecloth. We didn't really have a nice tidy table to work with. And what we ended up with was two round tables. Um, so I actually put them quite close together and decided to try out the possibility of the performers standing. Um, I had hoped this would sort of facilitate more moving around the space, more sort of changing positions, and there was a little bit of that going on, but I felt that the use of microphones, which was kind of necessary because it was sort of a foyery kind of space and there was a lot of traffic noise and it was way, way too hot to close the doors, um, it, everything did need to be amplified and that kind of restricted to us, you know, where they could go if they wanted the sounds to be heard clearly by the audience. So that was a bit of a shame. I'm, I don't know that that entirely came off. I think, I think it actually probably is better seated, um, all in all. But there were some lovely moments uh, during the performance. I haven't yet got the video. Uh, still waiting on that. And yeah, but I've got some photographs that I will insert here. So that was that. Uh, so where I left you last time, um, I had started working on Quiet Songs at Snape Maltings, which was converting into a, a, a live piece for voice and viola. Uh, the summary of this is that everything sort of gradually disintegrated over the course of the week. By the time we got to Thursday, I, I, I think I mentioned last time I was coming off the back of a really intense period. I mean, apart from all the Australia stuff, it had just been perpetual travel since then, and I reached a point on the Thursday of basically maximum exhaustion. I was not receiving criticism at all. I mean, not just not well, but it just wasn't going in, and I didn't know what to do with it, and I was getting increasingly stressed and freaked out, and we had this performance on the Friday, and I just reached a point where it was just like, no, no more. I'm just stepping back from this. Uh, I do think that the work I did during the week, there are some points in there that I think there's something that can be done with, um, but it was clear that nothing was going to be ready for the performance we were doing for staff on the Friday afternoon and I felt that time was better off, better, better spent working on um, particularly Josh's piece which was very complex which we were doing in that performance uh, and getting Ed's as tight as possible. I think this was the right thing to do. It was. It felt a bit like giving up at the time, but at the same time I it just really cleared my head and I was very aware that once we got home I had one day off and then we were going to be spending a day with Zubin Kanga, which I'll talk about in a minute, and I didn't want to have my brain completely toasted for Zubin. Uh, so yeah, it was definitely the right thing to do. I think there is... I haven't actually looked again at the video just yet, but I will once I'm editing this. Um, but from what I recall, uh, there is one piece in particular that's based on uh, it's a drone, basically, um, with some singing that I feel I might be able to do something with. <coughs>
My feeling at the moment is that where I'm going to take this is to kind of head back to the original plan of it being voice and electronics using viola sounds um, or even just voice and electronics. I The comments that the guys made were that the viola was strong but that the voice was weak. Part of this is a factor that I was making both up as I went along. Not really experienced at improvisation on two things at once when I've only got a very, very vague idea of what I want to do to start with. Uh, the other is a purely physical thing of having the viola under the chin and trying to sing and then sort of trying to hold it in an unnatural position further down uh, to make more space for this area. Uh, it just didn't work terribly well, I don't think. Um, and at the very least I want to separate out viola sounds from voice sounds, try to really work out what I'm doing and then maybe I'll come back and see if there's a way that I can do everything live um, or at least part, partially live. I mean maybe if there's repeated things I can use like a loop pedal or something and start up a viola loop and then stop playing the viola and then bring in the voice so that I'm not trying to, you know, pat my head and rub my tummy <laughs> or something like that. Um, so it wasn't wasted time uh, there's definitely some material I'm pleased with. Uh, the pigs didn't really go anywhere. Uh, I think the mooing's kind of related to this this, this droney piece that I liked, but it's yeah, it's not not terribly strong. I felt the pigs actually got less strong, um, but maybe I can still do something with that. So the next thing was our day with Zubin Kanga. Um, this is a new project uh, for Bastard Assignments. We're kind of in an R&D phase. We just wanted to get together and try out some ideas and we're extremely grateful to the PRS for Music Foundation who are supporting this R&D period for us. And so the plan is that each of the four of us are going to write for Zubin and he's going to write something for all five of us. So. That's very exciting. We're, we're, we're super chuffed about that. Um, everything's very early days at the moment. I literally went in with a single mental image, which was just of Zubin sliding onto the piano. Um, but it was a really great session, actually. We had about 45 minutes each. And um, so I kind of explained this image to Zubin, and I, I sort of came up with this idea of a trajectory of from reaching into the piano, then sort of moving backwards to the keyboard and then sliding underneath and playing from underneath in a more percussive way in particular. Uh, he says he's got some ebos, which I'm quite excited about, that that inside the piano playing could be plucking strings and percussive sounds, but also that there could be sustained notes that then continue to sustain sort of long term as he moves out of that space and under the piano, so there's a continuity between the areas of the piece and the sort of sounds that are being created. So we spent a fair bit of time uh, tinkering around inside the piano, um, scuffling about so under the piano. Is, do they get different pitches? Yeah, that mm. is at the top of the piano. Yeah. So you do have a little bit of pitch. 
to make all this work, the sustain pedal is going to have to be wedged, and that's fine. Um, so we sort of messed around with sounds that could be made on the sustain pedal, on the various parts of the soundboard from underneath, um, and sort of looking at different ways of moving about the underneath and from getting from you know a fairly normalish playing position to underneath and how that would look like, how that is positioned, how to avoid the pedals, uh, what kind of tension um, I want in that. <laughs> if you're playing the first chord of uh, Varagar over and over again as you call it. <laughs> so this is very much R&D, early days. I think we're go going to meet up again in the autumn. Uh, so if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, that's the spring. Um, so yeah, probably something in a September or something like that. Mm. Yes, to be confirmed. But there's definitely going to be another session coming up and um, I, I think we're all really looking forward to that. And so to the Britain Variations. Uh, I still haven't got a title. I still want a title. I want to stop calling it the Britain Variations. I want to stop thinking about Britain. Um, yeah, the good news is there's been quite a bit of progress on this. Uh, what I forgot to mention last time was that there'd been another kind of interim version, which was not terribly successful, but it was something that I felt I needed to test out. Uh, which was to transfer the idea of the crack drawings in kind of an enlarged form onto the original score. I really wanted to see if that approach would then somehow reveal some content or some, some way into that original that could be used. Uh, the answer is it doesn't at all. Not at all pleased with it, but I'm very glad I did it. The real breakthrough, I think, with this piece over the past few weeks has been a recognition of a disconnect between what I'm calling composing time versus performance time, you know, musical time, the time of the piece itself as you as you listen to it. Um, this probably seems an obvious thing, uh, but basically what it boils down to is that a 10 minute piece does not take 10 minutes to write, and indeed this 10 minute piece seems to have taken about a year so far and I still haven't finished it. Um, and this has been a large part of the frustration of that early work that I did with the green screen confessional video and the recorded audio sort of diary entries that I did in Australia. Um, firstly, that it was fragmentary and not consistent throughout the process, so it's not a complete record of the composition process. Uh, and secondly, just because there is far too much to put into the time scale of a sensible piece in a fairly normal concert program. Um, now I know there's going to be people out there who say just throw the research out the window and just make a piece and yes that's a valid point and I've been very tempted on several occasions to do that uh, but I've persisted with this I mean partly because I wanted to make it work but also because one of the things that Amy said when she first asked me to do this was that she specifically wanted it to be relevant to my research as well as her research. Um, I mean, just the mere fact of doing it makes it relevant to her research, so not a big ask there. Uh, but for my research, that then means sort of tying into some of these ideas. And it's been a really good opportunity to sort of really think about how to get this process stuff into a performed piece. And I think this, this recognition of this disjunct between the time it takes to compose something and the time it takes to perform something is going to be key and I think that's going to be a vital thing for me to understand and to have strategies to deal with across the rest of my PhD and possibly, you know, beyond. Uh, so, obviously when you've got far too much material like that, uh, you've kind of got two options. You can extract part of it and only show bits or you can condense it. The excerpting I rejected on the grounds that then it only shows part of the process uh, it's not, the part is not indicative of the whole at all. Uh, so I've come up with kind of two strategies for condensing. Two! Haha! <laughs> uh, so the first is that 
uh, particularly while I was in Australia, I think possibly just before, um, I started taking notes in the margins of my composition book, because I've been using this technique of overwriting, um, and then sometimes drawing over the overwriting, and so you can't actually read the original text, most of which is clearing the mental fluff out of my brain, um, <laughs> trying to get to an idea, uh, but so I start, started making these notes in the margins, which are ideas that actually seem to matter from all the fluff that I'm writing, and so just putting those in there, it's like condensing all that writing, so an hour's worth of writing may come down to, you know, three tiny phrases that can be read off in ten seconds flat. Um, it's, I felt that that's quite strong, it's from the time when that writing happened, the writing has been consistent even though the recording wasn't, um, and because it's then about me reading material that was created before, I don't have to worry too much about that whole oh, you know, going back and re-recording stuff that didn't work or to make it fit or to make it tidier or whatever. Um, I felt very strongly that I didn't want to re-record any of the video or audio material, that that would be uh, perhaps not genuine. Yeah, I, I, I get hung up on these things. Um, but it is very important to me, I think, to not be acting or pretending. But this text, because it's text, you know, I can just record it uh, however it needs to be, and it can become a performance because the content itself is the content that is in the books. I do hope that makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense to me. Um, yeah, so I, I've sort of, I've, I don't know that I've decided to use this material. I am working with this material. Uh, so I did a bunch of recording of this text and uh, I've layered it up a bit into sort of a trial version, the idea being that the layering of the sounds then reflects the layering of the, the original text in the notebooks and that you get sort of phrases sort of popping through here and there. Sound heard through sound versus intercutting of printed textures. Multiple layers of now over then. Chasm. Multiple layers of now over then. Break. Chasm. Fissure. Local equivalence to cello figures had forgotten drawn implications of the depth, fragmentation, division, lines and solid a glimpse part, of underneath, e.g., but cello suites. Rewriting. Uh, so that's one strategy, and Line that's, that's sort of replaced all the diary writing, entry rewriting. stuff that was before. Writing. Uh, writing yeah, writing, and I haven't quite thrown out the video, to be honest. I'm very fond of the idea of video in this piece, but I am thinking that once the sonic part of it's bedded down, I think this kind of scrabbly noisy nature of this layered sound might go very well with speeded up video of the drawing that I have from the earlier stages. Um, yeah, it's... I'm thinking that there's going to be repeated sort of sounds and that maybe those sort of punctuations can be paired then with still images from the other drawings, the crack drawings, um, and maybe this can come into it in some way, but I'm not... I, I'm, I'm reluctant to say yes it's going to be in there because I think there's still a lot of work to do and I, the sound is more important. The video may not be practical really for Amy to work with. Um, the last time we talked about it, nobody else was using video, so I'm... She doesn't seem to mind lugging a projector around, but at the same time, if it makes the piece less performable, then possibly it's not going to add enough value to make that worthwhile. So, the idea's there, but I'm not committed to it, I'm not committed to getting rid of it, I'm just sort of still thinking about it, thinking how it might work. The second means of condensing this composition time into performance time that I came up with was the idea of using the narrative, the story of how this was composed. So I made this this sort of list of a uh, timeline really of how it all came together. Um, and when I was thinking about this sort of question about composition time versus musical time, it occurred to me that it's actually a narrative. Uh, you know, it starts here and ends here, and this is how it gets from A to B. Uh, but that there were also significant kind of chunks 
of you know I was working with physical score manipulations to start with and I was working mostly with writing and drawing um, that kind of thing and so that because it chunks neatly that then can easily equate to movements and so I started from that as a as a point to structure the material I had to, to select from all this vast amount of content that didn't have a form um, and choose this is what goes at the beginning this is what goes in the middle and TBC this is what goes at the end um, so far I'm quite pleased with it it's feeling quite strong it's yeah it, it's working for me um, and that idea from that first movement because I was working with physical score manipulations I've come to this sort of method of using collage chunks of the Britain original and so I've kind of got to a point where collaging in these chunks of Britain um, and then annotating them or defacing them to make them do what I want to do with that material. It's quite rough at the moment and difficult to read but yeah I'm thinking that the whole score is going to be basically based on chunks of Britain with hopefully nothing actually just written um, as as in I plucked this out of my head and I'm just going to write it. Um, everything is going to come from the score in some fashion. I'm, I'm really pleased with how this is working and yeah Amy seems to quite like the idea and we had a rehearsal yesterday where we played through this stuff and I'm really pleased with how it's going. It's feeling oh so much better. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to carrying on with it. We are going to meet up when I'm in Manchester in April and just have a coffee probably and sort of chat about what's next. And we are looking at a date in hopefully July or August to record, uh, which would be brilliant. And yeah, it's really nice to have something that close, although I'm freaking out a bit with fact that May has basically gone <laughs> got so many things on it's pretty much been obliterated um, yeah and just a lot of gigs coming up over the next three months um, but yeah it's good to have a challenge anyway that's it for now thanks very much for watching as always if you've got any comments or questions please leave them below and I will see you next time thanks bye <laughs>